Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today on this video, how we show you how to remove that intake manifold on this 16 valve 1.9 multi-jet engine, okay? This intake manifold over here has some leaks and the customer tried to repair them with some glue. But as you can imagine, having the boost pressure inside of that intake manifold, it will push out that glue over there, okay? So, it, as you may see right now, I have here a partial disassembly because before I was doing here the video for the gearbox and that is done, so I now have here this uh, partial disassembly to help me out to take out this uh, intake manifold. I already took out here also the intake pipes. You all have already seen that on other videos, okay? And right now what I'm about to do is to remove that high pressure fuel pump. I already showed you how to remove it without removing the timing belt on these engines. It's very possible to do, very easy to just create access there to engage on that, those two holes over there, okay? So if you are curious about that, down on the description you have a video for that. Let's go. All of the wiring harness has to go, has to be disassembled and put to that side of the engine. It has to be on that side because we have to reach the manifold and pull it out like that. So nothing can be in that way. We have to remove everything that is on the way of the manifolds. So all of the wiring has to go that way. It is not very difficult, okay? Taking out here the plug for the compressor, AC compressor. Take out these two clips over here, that one and that one. Put it up. Take out here this connector. Next, take out here the clip. Now the wiring starts to go from behind the power line, the power steering line over here in this in this direction. Remember on my video about the injectors, the way to remove here these connectors for the injectors and also how to put the zip tie. We also have to remove here these vacuum lines. This model here is back there a vacuum chamber, a vacuum reservoir that you have to be careful with.
The vacuum box is held down with two nuts, top and bottom. Take them out and remove the vacuum box altogether. I advise you not to remove these vacuum lines as you can break up the vacuum box. The bottom nut can be a little bit tricky to, to take out, but uh, it's not very hard. Now the vacuum box will heat up here on these pipes and you may have to screw them out or force them a bit out. As you can see. And so by following these metal pipes over here, you will have two nuts there on the side of the starter and over here near the thermostat you will have another nut over there that you want to back up and that way the metal pipes will be able to move a bit to take out here the vacuum box. Now, it is not crucially necessary to do, but if you are doing this for the first time or second one, you want to have uh, as more space as possible to do so. Normally what I do is just to back up everything just a little bit and that way I can do the job, but I want to show you uh, if you are doing this for the first time, okay? One more screw over here to hold down the vacuum lines. Just remove it. Pull up the vacuum lines. While you are pushing, pushing out the metal pipes like this, take out the vacuum box. Best to take out here this breather hose to a side to make more room. Best thing really would be to take out the vacuum lines, but I'm really afraid to do that, not to mess anything. Maybe I'll do it from, so it's out of the studs. Now it's a matter of uh, pulling it around, but I have a wiring harness. Maybe now it's the time to pull it back. I have one more, yeah, one more connector to the high pressure fuel pump. Just like on the injectors, be very careful with the connector. I have one more wire for, mm, okay, for the oil switch, but I don't, don't want to mess with that right now. Sometimes we have to work like this, we have to switch your position. Right now I want to take out here this breather hose that goes on this pipe that goes back there to the oil separator. This car has an oil catch can from factory. It is that oil separator and it is no maintenance because it will uh, put the oil back into the oil sump. So it's much easier on this. So I want to take out here this metallic one for two reasons. It is on my way to take out there the vacuum box and whatnot. And also because in the, it is in the way of the intake manifold itself. So it has to be removed anyway, okay? So now here, just putting to the side here this uh, power steering hose. So I can reach here this bolt and that bolt over there.
taking advantage here of my position, I will remove here this return collector of the diesel. These bolts are not correct. Before taking out the bolts, I should have removed here this, uh, these hoses, but let's try it anyway. This one is easy. Make sure to do it with a with blunt screwdriver, not to be very harmful for the, for the hoses. Maybe on this I can... Uh, I also have to take it out in this... Uh, At some point we'll have to take out here also the coolant because we have lines going up through this intake manifold and also a passageway through the intake itself. So a, most of the coolant must come off. Again on this Alpha 159 is very easy to do like I showed you before. Sometimes we have to work a little bit harder, but it's best to do it to do like this than to break any, uh, anything else. And uh, in this way, a much more satis satisfying job. While we have this out here, make sure that the, the the hoses do not have any creases, any tears, any way of the vacuum to escape. You can also test this box. I'll tell you about that in another video. Okay. Just put it to a side, a safe side, and let's carry on. <laughs> Look at this, the, the common rail is loose. So about this high pressure fuel pump, I already did a video for this. Uh, it is down on the description on the Alpha 156 812 engine. It is very similar to this one, really, really very similar. This one ha has a lot more access to it, so it's much easier. So, not much to tell over here. This nut is not from here. Actually, this uses this has to use 12 millimeter nuts, not 13, and it has to be self-locking ones. So for this, I have two more nuts, as you can remember, and I do, now do not know if they are 12 or 13, so I have to pick a little bit to find out, but I think they are 13. Another 13, I have to put new or good used nuts over here because this can back up with vibration. Once again, if you need to, you can drop the nuts because you will take out the high pressure fuel pump anyway, so you can, you can reach for them. Also, above that, these ones will not be reused, so if, even if they fall onto the ground, no matter. Once again, on the earlier models, like the 156, you had a 13 millimeter nut, yes, but with a washer, this one does not have it. And on this ones, you have a 12 millimeter nut with a flange and it is self-locking. As you can see on this high pressure fuel pump, you have the keyway 
that you have to respect over here. And the position of it is the of the assembly is the one that I told you on the assembly of the other high pressure fuel pump. In fact, as I did the video for the timing belt of the 8 valve one, I told you how should you synchronize this high pressure fuel pump. It's not completely necessary to do it, but the car really starts a little bit better. The idea is, as you have this high pressure fuel pump synchronized, it avoids, every time it pumps one of the three chambers, it avoids a, or tries to avoid a open injector, okay? In this way, providing you with a better start uh, wh while you are cranking. So basically now you have to take out here this stuff in order to create here some room for the intake manifold to slide out. You only need to remove this one. Now this is the part that you may be very annoyed, but I am very happy because this intake manifold will come out of this engine without me removing here this bracket. Because as you can see down there, uh, I have no material there to stop me to slide this intake off and in that way uh, much much less work to do okay so now it's just a matter of taking out here the support the bracket for the oil separator best known by oil catch can and uh, that's about it i had just have here three nuts over here one bolt another lower bolt over there i'll show you in a minute and then take out the nuts that hold down the intake itself and slide it out. The swirl on this one is already uh, deleted, so I would not do a video for that, but I would have a video for a swirl delete soon on my channel because I have a GT to do also. And on that one, I may have to take out the bracket for or the support for the high pressure fuel pump because that one, it is a different type. But on this one, I'm glad it is like this so I can show you that it is possible. About the swirl actuator, the electric one, it has to remain here and it has to remain connected to the wiring harness. It has to move freely during the entire operation and it, has, it, and it is not necessary to remove it in terms of software. 13 millimeter head bolt, take it out all the way, if possible, with a magnet for example. As you can see, the bracket is now very much free, ready to, to take out. One by one, remove the nine 12 millimeter nuts from this intake manifold. Not eight, nine. Now, with this, we'll have still the actuator attached to the intake, but that is not the problem normally. But if you are not able to remove it, like I am not being able right now, at least without forcing it. You can take out the two studs that hold down the, the actuator in place. Not very difficult at all to, to do it. Sometimes you have space and other times you do not. It depends a lot on the cars. Makes on the year of construction. You have different brackets, different actuators. So you have to adapt to your current situation. These are two studded screws that are here to hold down to the actuator and also provide 
equipment to this racket of the, the breather hoses of the oil catch can. This. You have here also the gasket. Already removed the, the coolant. This intake manifold will split in two. For that, we have to take out the bolts over here. We have 3, 6, 9, 12, um, and 15. So we have here the bolts, they are T25, and we will crack this open to be easier to clean. As you can imagine, it, it, it will be much easier. But as we have the glue that is not from factory let's see if it is that easy to remove People usually use RTV on all the wrong places and where they should use it, they don't. Let's clean this out, reseal it and uh, assemble everything again. Search now for any problems on the threadings, mainly there on the EGR mountings because if someone, if some is wrong, now is the time to repair it. Mainly here on the EGR. For example, if some of them are bad, now it's time to repair them. Everything is cleaned up, now we have to do a nice thick layer of RTV to fill up this cavity all around. It has to be high enough to be squashed once we put the other half of the intake manifold in, okay? If you can see this over here, on the inside, you can take that out, but wait a few hours until it dries up. 
it will be very easy to remove with a screwdriver okay just peel it off very easy Next bolt down here is the swirl actuator. Remember that it has to be in place because it has to be connected. But the, the this little piece over here has to come off, okay? Because if it is just disconnected, it can bind, it can be stuck and then launch a fault code. Next, we are good to go on the oil separator, on the oil catch can. So we can put the nut over there, there. A bolt over here and another bolt down there. time here for the high pressure fuel pump and do not forget that this one has a key that you have to match up with that key way over there so be very careful to introduce the high pressure fuel pump because the key itself may fall off okay it's very important to be correctly mounted because if not the shaft may be forced because the keyway can be in this position right like so okay and that can may cause a lot of problems and sometimes a little bit of grease may help to fix it in place okay
make sure to do a bunch of ignition cycles so you can uh, purge out all of the air to the to the diesel tank because we removed the, some uh, uh, fuel lines and uh, the high pressure fuel pump and whatnot and this will help out quite a bit on the first start as you can imagine the first start will not be very fast because of the air still trapped on the lines okay very nice make sure to check for any leaks make sure to check for something out of place I will do a very thorough cleanup here on the engine base so it's more presentable to the customer. About the assembly here of several components that I did not show on this video, it is because I already showed you on other videos, they are down on the description. I'm talking about there the EGR, for example, the throttle body, for example, the battery and battery tray, the intake on that side over there. All of that is down on the description for other videos related to EGR, related to DPF, for example, I have also for that related to a lot of stuff also down in the description you have a lot of videos related to this one and related to other areas of the car for example lack of power brakes and whatnot okay also down in the description you have links for helps for the channel if you are able to do so i see you next time guys bye